Mo. Oh, Mel, oh my baby. gosh, Hi, thank baby. you so much for coming. Of course, thanks for having Welcome me. Welcome to the studio. Come in. Oh, this, yes. oh, she's gorgeous up in here. Thank you so much. Thank okay. You so much. I mean, not as gorgeous as how you're looking right now. What? Stop. You look fucking amazing. Wait, I look amazing? Does she not look fucking amazing? Oh my gosh. Stop. Well, girl, I can put you in this gig too. <laughs> what do you mean? I can put you in the geesh. I brought my stuff with me. Do I could give you the whole transformation right now. Do we have time? Are you, are you done with that? We have time? Yeah. Okay. All right. Then, All let's, right. Do it. then let's get it going. Let's do it, yeah. Okay. Before you start, oh yeah, I have one demand. What is it? You fucking make me look like the baddest bitch on planet Earth. Mm. All right, that's right up my alley, baby. I'm ready. Okay, so we're just washing the face off. What I really want to do is get rid of the eyebrows. So what we're gonna have to do is glue them down. Oh wow! Shit. Yes. <laughs> do you know anything about the drag transformation? Not have you seen it? No. Not one. Oh, baby bit. cakes! You're in for a ride. I went to go do karaoke, and the host was in drag. Oh, really? That's the closest thing. What? Was. You're oh. lying. Yeah. Where I mean, was this at? WeHo, Cabo Cantina. Oh, Shout out Cabo Cantina. Per usual. Yeah, just the basics, you know. Mm-hmm. Where do you? Uh, where'd you get started in drag? So I was born and raised in Iowa. Iowa. Yeah. Surprise! Why? Why would you do that, Ophelia? Girl, no, I'm just kidding. All right, I'm like, well, my parents aren't here, so they can't yeah, answer that. Yeah. Um, but literally, born and raised in Iowa, mm -hmm. um, I actually didn't find out about drag until like my mid twenties. Really? Yeah. So I had no idea this art form existed. Mm -hmm. I was a very sheltered, so we weren't really exposed to any like gay culture or anything like that. Oh, wait, there's no gay culture in Iowa? Yeah, no Very shit. little. No shit. I mean, girl, <laughs> it's Iowa, in the middle of the cornfield. Yeah. Ain't nothing's gonna happen. Um, I'm sure a lot of gay stuff happened in the cornfield. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, the low key kind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like, um, I moved from Des Moines to Iowa City, and that's when I really found out about drag queens mm -hmm. and drag culture. Mm -hmm. And honestly, when I found out about it, I was like, I could do this. Yeah? Okay, I could pussy stun all these hoes. <laughs> that was my thought. Yeah. And so I did. <laughs> and then I kind of just learned everything on my own. Really? Yeah. Just watching like YouTube videos and mm -hmm. yeah. YouTube is the most powerful oh, source of information. 100%. So that's how I learned everything. Wow. When did you like, when was the first time you were in full drag and mm -hmm. you like, you put every, you put two and two together, you put from the top to bottom, you were in full drag? Oh my remember? gosh. Yeah, so um, there's this drag little contest going on in mm -hmm. Iowa City. It's called Drag You, where they put someone in makeup for the first time ever that has never done drag. And I was one of the chosen ones. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, this just feels so right. It's basically a culmination of everything that I've done in my like high school life. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's when I just realized I can really put everything that I love into one art form. Mm -hmm. And that's how Ophelia was created. When, so Ophelia, the name, so if, can I ask yeah. what, what your, your... Like I how I got it from? Yeah, or, like, or your 
former name? Oh, former name. Uh, is so, that, well, what, how, how should I ask you that question? Um, well, if you're wanting to know, like, my government name. Government name. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the name on the social security number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That is Steven. You know, Steven? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do I look like a Steven? No. You look like a... Maybe. Ophelia. That's what you look okay, like. Okay, I look like a superstar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, Steven's my boy name, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. or government name, however you call it. Um, and then Ophelia, I got, when I was reading... Hamlet and Shakespeare. Oh. Is that what it's called? I don't know. <laughs> ah! Hamlet, English books? <laughs> um, yeah, it was like Hamlet and Ophelia, I think. Oh. Um, but I was like in history class and I was like, this Ophelia bitch is pussy stunt. She just killed half the people in her village. And I was like, I relate to her. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but she is pussy stunt, so yeah. I was like, that's my name. Can you tell the you tell the audience what pussy stunt is? Oh my gosh, yes, pussy stunt is my favorite vocabulary word. It basically means that you are stunting in the highest form. So pussy stunting, there's like stunting and then okay work and then pussy stunt. Yeah. That's my three levels. Yeah. When I play when I play basketball, I pussy stuff for sure. Bro. Oh. Ain't nobody stopping okay, me on the basketball Okay, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. how you use it. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. she's a pussy stunt in basketball yeah. player. Yeah. Oh, I just dunked on someone. Do you pussy stunt? Okay. Dude. Oh my gosh. Or when like I kill a set, like a comedy show. Oh. It's like how'd the show go? Fucking pussy stunt that exactly. shit, dog. What's up? Ah. Right? Yeah, that's how it is. <laughs> The crazy thing is, is that as a drag queen, you uh -huh. basically use like all like arts and crafts materials. <laughs> really? Yeah, like we use glue, Elmer's glue, mm -hmm. we use like eye glitter, all that, so. Uh -huh. When did you, uh, when did you move to LA? I actually moved here last August. Wow, uh -huh. so you're LA baby. Yes, I literally just arrived, fresh off the boat. So it's been, a interesting experience because obviously it was in the middle of COVID. Yeah. So. Oh, so you really haven't experienced LA like that. I have not experienced like a single lick of you LA life. You haven't experienced West Hollywood like that either. Uh-uh. And my friends keep gassing me up like, this shit's popping. It is. Meanwhile, I'm like, <laughs> girl, is. I see one tumbleweed in the no. middle of the street. Dude, <laughs> dude, I celebrated my 21st birthday in West Hollywood. Really? This shit was fucking awesome. What'd you guys dude. do? So, so my birthday is October 29th, uh -huh. so it's two days before Halloween. Oh, wow. And I don't know if people told you, but Halloween in West Hollywood is uh -huh. unlike anything in the country. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. If, yeah, Doug knows. Uh, yeah, Doug I Doug definitely no fucking knows. Right. Like, you know, that shit gets fucking crazy, but like in the best way. Like, mm -hmm. people are just so free and, and the costumes are just so creative. Mm -hmm. There's music. They, they, they close down like blocks. Oh my god! And it's just like one big party, block party, music, Halloween costume. That's amazing. Yeah, it's like it's like unlike anything in the country, really. Uh, I'm so jealous. But what's, what's Hollywood like on like a regular non-Halloween type uh -huh. shit? Uh, it's really gay, but like in the best way right. possible. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is so gay and awesome, dude. I love that. Like, it, it's like. The, the bars and the restaurants and like all those lounges are really mm -hmm. cool. The people are always just such a delight. That's amazing. Yeah, you girl. love it. I can't wait. Okay. Let's see. So can you pull your hair back a little? Yeah. And like a ponytail. Like this? Yeah, in that part. Just so I can really cover this. And I can push all this back here. Yeah, I'm sure all, all my fans will love this. All my groupies will love this. Yeah, good thing I'm, I'm a Christian. There we go. <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Um, so, so you've been here, wow, so not even a year. Yeah, how long have you lived here for? I'm born and raised. In <gasps> born and raised? Yeah. Okay, work. Yeah, born and raised in LA. I can't see myself living anywhere else, to be honest with oh, you. Oh, that means you know it's good. Oh, yeah. It's like everything here. Uh, Literally everything. Anything have you, like, tra here? like, where have you traveled outside of LA or so, Los Angeles? Basically, across the, across the country. I've never visited uh -huh. outside the country, but uh -huh. 
uh, I go on tour and like I visited like 85% of the states in the country. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. So you've been everywhere, okay. Yeah, yeah, I've been everywhere. I've met so many people. What's your favorite state so far that you've like visited? Besides California? Mm-hmm. Denver's pretty fucking cool. Denver? Mm. Denver's pretty fucking cool. Like they hit, their, their art out there, their music, their people are just so chill. Yeah, um, when I was driving here, we were in uh, Colorado Springs and mm. it was just a fun time. Like, yeah. they just know how to do it. New York's pretty cool too. New York sounds amazing. I just like can't stand the congestiveness of it. You been there? No, but I've seen videos. You know okay. New York? I don't know. Dude, but New York is fucking cool. New York is like the only place where I visited and I, I went like, I can see myself moving here. Mm -hmm. Like oh, anywhere, oh, else, like anywhere okay. else, as much as I enjoyed it, I'm always like, yeah, but it, it ain't LA. Mm -hmm. New York was like, where I was just like, yeah, I could totally move here. I feel like New York is like the sister state of Los Angeles. Yeah, it's like the, um, it's like the cousin. Oh yeah. It's like the cousin, like I they're always that. competing and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't really get it. Have you been to San Francisco? I've literally have only been to like Chicago and then here. That's crazy. I've never been to Chicago. That's one of the few oh, big cities that I I've see. yet to go. How's Chicago? Chicago's amazing. I, I feel like it's like the same as Los Angeles. Why were you why were you there? Um I was doing gigs. You know, oh, yeah, so, yeah, so, I'm in Iowa and it's only like a three hour drive. So that actually goes into what I want to ask you. So like, what, how do you, you make money off of, uh, do you like the term drag queen? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Drag queen is the default term, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, some people don't like the word queen, um, which I understand because they see themselves as like a drag artist mm. and not like a woman presenting yeah. a drag artist. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, drag queen is my scope. I'm more of like a female illusionist is my like drag aesthetic. So that's kind of like. So you be making money off of being a drag okay, queen. Okay, just a little bit. Girl, the money is dried and the well is empty. It's just hard to like get gigs and like you get paid dust basically mm -hmm. to just dance around in front of people for tips. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, it's the work we have to do. And usually drag artists don't really make money unless they're on like a TV show. Or is it everyone who does drag, is like their sexuality like different than being straight? Drag is literally for anyone. Mm -hmm. Like it's not just about female presenting or like, it's just about doing art. And although the straight drag artists are very few in between. Mm -hmm. We definitely want to let, you know, the heterosexuals know that anyone can do drag and like, as long as you love to do art, mm -hmm. it's here for you. Mm -hmm. RuPaul said it best, you're born naked and the rest you, is drag because oh, everything shit. you do after that is basically your um, like outward perception of who you are. Yeah, oh wow. Very powerful. I love me some RuPaul. Okay. He's fucking cool. Ru is like iconic. Like she really paved the way oh, for. Sure. Yeah, sorry. No, you're good. Um, Ru really did pave the way for like all the other like small artists out there because mm -hmm. she fought for us. So mm -hmm. I can only appreciate that from her. So, what's your experience with drag? Like, what have you known? Like, what did you come encounter with? Um, I don't know. So I grew up in South Central. I grew up in, like, really bad areas here in L.A. Uh -huh. And um, I think the reason why the misconception that there is on drag artists and people who dress up or express themselves in that way, like, it's kind of been skewed because, you know, in South Central and all these, like, poor neighborhoods like the only time we saw someone that was dressed up like that they were mm -hmm. like street hookers yeah or you know addicted to drugs and stuff like that mm, and like very much and so. it wasn't until I got a little older like in my teens where I did start exploring other parts of the city I got my license 
Uh -huh. You know what I mean? I was like uh, hanging out with like different people and being introduced to other people where I realized that like it's kind of a business sometimes. Oh, you know? absolutely. And it, not only business, but an art, you know, mm -hmm. uh, creative outlet for most people. So I'm just mm -hmm. like, okay, yeah, that's, that's kind of like, that makes sense, you know? Right. And, but a lot of people who don't get out of the hood don't experience that, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Or, or when they do get uh, presented with something like that, they turn away and they don't mm -hmm. want anything to do with it because of preconceived Because they notions. just don't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah, ignorance and, and um, you know, it's not really like, you know, it's not really their fault to an extent, but, you know, it's your responsibility to grow and, like, to, you know, kind right, of teach yourself. Educate yourself. Educate yourself, exactly, exactly. There's, like, no point in living, like, under a fucking, like, you know, you know, the, the world's much bigger than your neighborhood is what absolutely. I always tell people, you know, mm -hmm. I always tell people that because that, that's how people get lost in, like, gang shit and, like, mm -hmm. just petty shit is because when they think that their world is just their neighborhood, when in reality the world is much bigger than the 10 blocks. So much live, bigger. You know, especially here in LA, like, like, like I've always been like, you know, loud and, and joyful and stuff like that. So uh -huh. people would invite me everywhere when I was younger and I would always say yes. So, I, you know, I know every inch of the city cause like I've been there, I've like met people there. And, um, and yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my experience. That's so, good. That's yeah. good because I feel like when we're born, it's our duty to like educate ourselves on the bigger scope of the world, mm -hmm. because otherwise you'll only know what you expose yourself to. Yeah, exactly. And that's such a disservice to your own self because the world is so beautiful and there's so many things to experience. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Are you uh, close with your family? Um, somewhat. So I'm close with my mom, mm -hmm. which is pretty much the only family. That I need, honestly. Yeah. My dad is like trying to get closer in my life, which is really nice. But are um, you allowing him to? So here and there, I choose. Yeah. I have the power. Depends now. how you feel. Yeah. Oh shit! Do you not want me to open my eyes? Um. Yeah, you can. Okay. It's fine. Why he fucked up or something? No. <laughs> no. Uh uh. I'm just putting on the eyeshadow now because when your eyes were. Uh, close. I just need to set the base. Oh, no, no, no. I'm saying, did you, your dad fucked up or something? Oh. Um, yeah, so um, he was raised in a very, like, Christian household. Mm. Very religious. Um, so that's kind of what made him, like, not understand, like, you know, me and yeah. what I wanted to do. And, I mean, I didn't even understand who I was either. Yeah. Um, but all I knew was that I just felt different. And... They kind of clocked it before me, so. They're your, pa your parents did? Yeah, so they're trying to preemptively remove it, you know, being gay and. How? Oh. Um, you know, that. If, yeah. if at any point you don't want to answer, just, we'll just say. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Um, no, they like tried to like, you know, put me in conversion therapy and just like try to pray the gay away. What? Very that Iowa mentality, so. Yeah, what is a. Um what did you do in conversion therapy? So I never actually went, <laughs> um, but they were trying. Yeah, 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 Girl, yeah, 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 yeah. I say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, from the stories that I've heard from you know some friends that I mm -hmm. know that have gone through it, mm -hmm. they basically put you like in a room with like everyone else who's there, and basically, like they want you to like list um, everyone that you've had sexual encounters with and say how much of a sin that is. It's very a religious kind of mm. vibe, so. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's not cute. Yeah. But I'm just like, if you love your child, why are yeah. you putting them through this torture, you know? Yeah, what do you- It doesn't make sense. What do you sense. care about who, who they fucking have sex with? Because like, it it's religion, it's the Bible. That's true. They're indoctrined to believe that you know what the Bible says mm, is right, and yeah. if you stray away from that, then yeah. you're going to hell. So, yeah. tilt this way for me, thank you. Well, do you think, so do you think them wanting to put you through conversion therapy, do you think that comes from love? Uh-huh, very much so, but, which is like the worst kind of love. But yeah, it's basically for love, or what I think, it's because they're uncomfortable and they don't understand mm -hmm. what is going on. Like we said before, ignorance. Like Exactly. Like, if you don't teach yourself, then all you're going to know is what you've been taught. Yeah. 
And sometimes what you've been taught is not always yeah. what's right. Did you have anyone um, in Iowa that kind of helped you through it? Um, not really. Dang, you had to go Probably, through that shit by yourself. Yeah, like, the only time that I truly felt free was when I moved out and when I moved to Iowa City for mm. college. Mm -hmm. And then that's when I really found my tribe yeah. and really found the people that I call home. Mm. So that's why I always say home is not your blood. It's who, um, it's just who you call home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Are you still close with those people? Um, not really. I'm not close with my family, just my mom. What about, uh, but, um, uh, your family from Iowa City, your tribe. Yes, yeah? I'm so close. They literally message me like every week saying how much they miss me. Mm -hmm. And I miss them so much. Yeah. Are they also in, into drag or are they just the yes. homos? Yes. Yeah? It's half, I mean, Iowa City is just like half homos, half <laughs> um, drag queens. So <laughs> yeah. it's very interchangeable at yeah, this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. And like two Christians. Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Do you ever think you're going to let your dad get back in your life or not? Um, here and there. Like, he's definitely said how wrong he felt, you know. Hmm. So I see a huge change. And as long as he keeps that mentality and just lets me lo live my life and yeah. be free, then I will gladly gotta, accept him. You got to earn it a little bit. Exactly. I like to have them fight a little bit. I'm a Scorpio. So. Oh, yeah, me too. Okay, come on, yeah, October yeah, yeah. 29th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're uh, October or November Scorpio? Um, November 12th. Oh, for sure, yeah. for sure. Girl, you yeah. know us. Yeah. We don't like to get a little yeah. vindictive. You don't forget anything, dude. Okay, I don't forget, forget shit. forget. Yeah. Mm -mm. So I'm adding contour to your face. Um, because drag queens did popularize the Kim Kardashian look before her. You mm. know, when she did the three C's on her yeah. face. Yeah. yeah, that's an old drag queen technique that we did to kind of create a new look. Mm. So it's just about balancing lights and shadows together mm -hmm. to, yeah, just kind of sculpt your face. Are there enemies in the drag game? Enemies? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah? Baby cakes. We're gay. So <laughs> we like to fight, whether it be for nothing. Yeah? So. What's the last fucking fight you got in there? <laughs> I don't get in fights because I'm not problematic, but I love to watch them. And yeah, I love to see yeah, them yeah, unfold. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, we're opinionated people, mm. and we basically just want to continue to be the trailblazers for you know, our queer community and make sure that we're keeping each other in check. Yeah. So it's just important to us to make sure that, you know, everyone is kind of being on their best behavior. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> when you date, how, how soon do you tell people, to tell them that you do drag? Um, I usually wait till the first couple of dates um, just because I want to make sure that they either like me for me and then I want to see if they can accept my drag persona. Mm. Because honestly, I have a partner right now. And surprise! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been dating for like a, three years, I would say. Three years? Yeah, three and a half. Uh, we actually met in Iowa. He's from Iowa City? Um, so he was born in Kansas City, but he moved to Iowa with his best friend. Wow. Um, and then that's how we met. Yeah. So. And he ended up moving to Los Angeles with me, which was iconic. What? Yeah. That's fucking cute as shit. Dude, that's... Right, that's... Did that make you guys' bond stronger? Absolutely. Fuck like, yeah, huh? literally, <laughs> the day before I moved here, um, I was in... I was at my best friend's house, and mm -hmm. we were on shrooms. <laughs> and I, like, towards the end of the trip, I was just, like, crying on the floor because I was, like... Oh my god, I'm truly leaving Iowa and my partner's moving with me. Like Oh, they were happy tears. Yeah, they were oh, happy okay, tears. Okay, okay, it yeah, was yeah. like built up tears. Just like finally that just finally happening. just released, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, so it was a good moment. It was when I really felt like I knew my place in this universe. Really? Yeah. That's fucking beautiful, dude. Which is everything. That's fucking beautiful. Do you see yourself staying in LA? Oh, absolutely. Oh, fuck like, yeah. I want to get on Drag Race. That fuck was like yeah. my whole point yeah. of moving here. It was to yeah. get on either Drag Race or to 
um, create my name in mm -hmm. the entertainment world mm -hmm. because I want to work in the entertainment yeah. industry. Yeah. Um, Does your partner do drag as well? Uh uh. Really? Baby cakes. If there were two drag queens living under one roof, it wouldn't work. It would be chaos. <laughs> really? Yeah. We already need like two closet spaces <laughs> for like me, Ophelia, and Jeff. Like, girl, it would wow. just be madness. I his name is it. Jeff. Yes, his name is Jeff. What would you? What would you? What would you name him? If he oh was my god, if he was a drag queen, yeah. um, I don't know. Drag queen names are so like. Name him Hamilton. Right, <laughs> the one I kill. <laughs> like, what would really your aesthetic like. be if you ever did drag? Like, what would you look for to create yourself as? Dude, I would be like the closest thing to a Disney princess if there fucking is. Oh yes. What's like a Disney princess that really? I really relate to. I don't relate to anyone because, but music wise, <laughs> my favorite music, my favorite Disney princess songs are The Little Mermaid. Oh, yes. Okay. And like, oh, what's like the f drag queen version of like the genie? I feel like uh, I always get called, I always get compared to the genie. So if I could like flip that. Right, and make it yeah. more draggy. Genia. <laughs> Genia. 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 Gina. Ooh. Gina. 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 Gina the genie. Doug likes that one. So Look Gina. Yeah, we'll do Gina. Okay. I think, I think it is. I think Gina. I think, all right, that holds, that holds the first Gina place Gina right the now. genie. Gina the. Gina the genie. <laughs> all right, there she is. Oh. Welcome to the States. Gina Look the genie. Gina the genie. <laughs> Make your wish come true. Hey. <laughs> now your tagline. Yes, dude. <laughs> She's already branding herself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are your thoughts on um, drag queens who keep their beard? Um, I love it. Really? Like, like I said before, drag is for anyone. You can literally create anything and call it drag. And I know a lot of bearded queens, actually. So I, I think it's just beautiful because it opens the scope of, you know, what it means to be in drag. Mm. I'm actually glad I'm not drinking because if I was drinking while while doing this, you would oh, the world would know baby. no more peace. Oh my gosh. What kind of drunk are you? Uh, I'm a happy loud one. Happy loud one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I I'm not as patient, like mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like like I'm quicker to to be on some fuck shit too, you know what I mean? Right. Like I'm quicker to like fight like or be mean. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like if someone like if someone called me a bitch right now, I'd be like, dude, you know, he's probably going through something or fucking, mm -hmm. you know. Or he's a stranger or he's probably on drugs or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if I was drunk and someone would call me a bitch, like Oh, I'll have it's over. Yeah, nice. it's over, dude. It's, I'll ask him one more time to say it in my face politely. You said, can you just repeat yourself just so yeah. I know yeah, that yeah, you yeah. called me a bitch? <laughs> yeah, I'm just sorry. Just so I can molly whip you. Yeah, I'm sorry. Who, whom do you think you're speaking to right, right now? And then, bah. And then, bop, bop. And then fucking Gina. Gina comes out and fucking slaps the shit out oh, of me, you know? Gina will get her purse. Yes, dude. With all the change in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the fucking chain, all the pennies, pure okay. pennies. Um, what are your thoughts on Jeffrey? Oh, baby, no words. No words? Um, Is that a positive or a negative? I couldn't see. Well, it's <laughs> like, listen, I respect Jeffrey as a businesswoman, mm -hmm. um, but as a human being, she definitely has a lot to work on. Um, obviously, I don't think she's like in the realm of wanting to change who she is. But, you know, a lot of my like friends that are like people of color, they really don't like Jeffrey, so mm -hmm. out of respect for them, mm -hmm. I don't like him either. But I think he's a really good businessman. Yeah. Do you consider yourself a person of color? Absolutely. Because as an Asian American, obviously there's a lot of like Asian hate crimes going on right now. Oh, dude, it's fucking terrible. It's right now. disgusting. Oh, and they're targeting yeah. old people. Like, what's causing really? all that shit? It just came out of nowhere. We don't know why, like, and like they, they just from like fighting. from like like nice places too, like San Francisco, like like right. very diverse places, like and and they're like home place, like yeah. Koreatown, yeah, like like it's not like Oklahoma or some shit. Or, no, it's literally in it's the like big San cities. Francisco, Chicago, like it makes no sense. Yeah. 
And the one story that just like breaks my heart is when that guy pushed that old woman mm -hmm. and she like fell in the concrete and had to get stitches on her head. I'm like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what. Something, something's, something's up. Yeah, so I, I just don't know. But you take pride in being an Asian American? Absolutely. I like being born and raised in Iowa. Mm -hmm. I was raised in a very American household. So I feel a lot of disconnect with my Asian roots, really? which is why I'm trying to like get back and find my heritage and kind of see what I've been missing. Yeah, what heritage is that? Um, so I'm Laotian and Thai Dom. Whoa. Um, yeah, it's very exotic. Yeah, yeah super <laughs> fucking exotic. Okay. I don't feel ya. We're rare. We get it. You're fucking <laughs> exotic and hot, dude. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I'm dead. Um, but yeah, like, you know, it's hard to look up information about Laotian and Thai Dom because mm -hmm. they're such a small country mm -hmm. in the realm of Asia. That Do you know how your parents ended up in it? Yeah, like yeah, my grandparents were born and raised in Laos and they oh. had my mom there mm -hmm. when she was a baby. And then they flew to America to have a better life. Mm. And so my mom wasn't a born citizen here. So she had to get her citizenship as well. Okay. So, and then she got my grandparents their citizenship so they can't get deported. Wow. So, yeah. It's just been that kind of journey. Yeah. I don't know who my dad is. Teehee. What's new? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's a journey that we all take in life. Yeah. Okay, I think she's done with the eyes. Are you ready for these lashes, mama? Oh, shit. Okay, y'all, oh, you forgot about that, Dude, huh? once I get these lashes on. Okay. Girl, it's gonna be game over. Yeah. That, okay. Hey, hi, hello everyone. It is your girl Ophelia and welcome to the world of Gina. How we doing boys? <laughs> <laughs> Ophelia. Hey, baby. What do you think? How do I look? Baby, you look gorgeous. You look stunning. You are here and ready. Thank you so much. I feel empowered. I, I've never Good. done anything like this, and I'm I'm glad that I did. Yeah, Cause... and I'm glad I'm the first person to, you know, have this journey with you. Yeah, you're basically like my fairy godmother. Okay. My fairy drag queen <laughs> godmother. Bippity boppity boo. <laughs> okay, bitch. <laughs> That's my first one. <laughs> yeah. And we have a new guest. Hello. Yes. Another plus one. This is my BFF dog. And manager on the low. Okay, oh, manager, shit. high key, low key. <laughs> okay. So yeah. who do I pay? You or your dog? Oh, oh, like a 10%. Oh, okay. The checks come to me. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. So we talked about a lot of cool stuff over there while you were, were you putting this on. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of want, I want to ask you, uh, have you ever received a compliment from someone that you never in a million years thought you would receive a compliment from? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, starting drag, you meet a lot of people who have been in the game for years and to receive validation from them is the icing on the cake, honestly, yeah. because they have been doing this game since like the 1980s, you know, and to hear that for someone like them to say, wow, you're really killing it. You're going far in the game. Like that is just and expression over the moon. Really? So. Yeah, it's like validating. It's like, exactly. Okay, right. It's your peers. You know, the people that have paved the way for us to be who we are today yeah. are the real heroes. And, you know, that's why we look up to them so yeah. much because they're the people that have, you know, paved the way. Yeah. I mean, we're in 2021 right now. I couldn't imagine, like, what they had to go through, like, in the. Exactly. Past. They're the ones that were there at Stonewall. They were the ones there fighting for gay rights, yeah. for women's rights. They were there being who they were, regardless of the repercussions that yeah. they had to face. And so we truly had to pay homage and yeah. respect for the people who have paid the way for us. That's awesome. They did that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trust. Yeah, I'm glad that you're like giving appreciation where it's due. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If, 
If you do drag and don't know your history, then baby cakes, there's, you gotta do your research. Do some, watch some YouTube videos. Okay, yeah. try. Yeah. Yeah. Watch some Melvin. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch some Melvin. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tune in, tune in. <laughs> but you know, that being said, you know, um, you said, yeah, they must've gone through some f fucking horrendous shit. Mm -hmm. But that being said, are there times in LA, I'm sure we're, you know, in Iowa, but in times in LA where you kind of, were a little afraid of walking on the street by yourself while you were in drag? You know, in Los Angeles, I've never really had to have that experience because I just moved here during the pandemic. But in Iowa, definitely I've had those experiences. Being, like not even in drag, I was literally just walking from the bar to my apartment complex mm -hmm. in just boy clothing and just yeah. normal like male presenting attire. I would have water bottles thrown at me in the middle of the crosswalk. I'd have people literally follow me to my apartment. And that was, those were probably the times where I felt most scared for my life because I was like, I don't know if these people are gonna follow me to kill me. Or like, I felt like I was the town gesture, like walking back home and everyone harassing me yeah, yeah. until I got to my doors and was able to lock it. Dude, that means you fucking had some fucking haters back then. Because, like, how are they going to know if you're in male presenting clothes? How are they going to know, like, exactly. who you are? They just that means saw... they must have fucking known you and, like, track, like kept an eye on you fucking on some hater-ass shit, dude. Honestly, Damn. I think there were just random people who were drunk. It was 2 a.m. They were drunk, the bars closed, yeah. and they saw a gay person on the street. And they're like oh, that's someone we can target, that's someone who's weak, that's someone who we can attack, and yeah. they did that. Yeah. Luckily, I kept my mouth shut, I just kept walking, I didn't want any conflict because I didn't want to beat a bitch hoe up, yeah, yeah. which I would have, yeah. okay, trust, I had a taser on me. Yeah. Um, but they wouldn't have known that, so if they tried anything physical, I was ready to retaliate. Have you ever had to fucking physically, like, fuck someone up? For Fortunately, no. I've never had to actually be in a physical altercation. Fortunately for them. Uh, fortunately <laughs> for them. Okay, trust, baby. Yep. Those are the key yeah. words. Yeah. But I, I commend any one of my brothers and sisters out there who have fought to stay alive, you know, yeah. during hatred, yeah. so. I mean, just recently, this past summer, there was a, a, um, some drag queens and trans people who were attacked on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, Absolutely, yeah, I know Eden the doll. That yeah. that's oh, my yeah. girl. Oh yeah, and she's fucking like bitch. She's girl. Famous, like. She's pussy stein. And yeah. she was with her friend, and they were literally on Hollywood Boulevard yeah. getting out of an Uber. And I saw the video. They got all their stuff stolen. That's People were taunting them, and they were just harassing and attacking them. And it absolutely breaks my heart to see that happen, even to this day. Yeah. Jesus, I wish a motherfucker would. Would come up to me wearing this okay. shit. Okay, <laughs> bitch. You'd know, be you the ass. Yeah, yeah, okay, dude. you'd molly wop them. But uh, molly wop. <laughs> and then pussy stunt. Okay, on top and of then pussy stunt yeah, 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 yeah. on the yeah. gray, baby. Yeah. yeah. But that's, that's crazy that you had to go through that. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the trials and tribulations of being gay in America at, at this age. And at the end of the day, I just hope that, you know, the path that we pave and the path that everyone else paved before can create a stable future for everyone to just live free and live authentically in the future. Yeah, yeah. You're here. Awesome. Okay. Cheers to that. Cheers to motherfucking Cheers to that, that, baby. Cheers to you guys for coming out again. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, that being said, like, you said that, like, um, you know, your childhood wasn't easy because of who you were and your family. <laughs> What would you tell little 13-year-old Ophelia? Oh. Would it be negative? Would, be, would it be positive? Would you warn her? Would you give her advice? Like, what did 13-year-old Ophelia need? Oh my gosh, 13-year-old Ophelia, like, she was honestly and truly a troubled kid. She was so misunderstood, so lost in the adult world. I just wanna let her know that everything's gonna be okay. You don't have to feel like the world is gonna end and you don't have to feel like ending your life would, you know, have a type of 
calmness to your family because they don't want to see that. They don't want to see you go. You're meant to be here on this earth to do something greater. And it's these trials and tribulations that you have to go through in order to connect with all the other kids who are feeling the same way. So just keep fighting. Just keep moving on. And you're going to survive because you are a survivor and you are a strong person. So that's what I would say to her. That's really powerful. Thank you for being so open. Of course. And I think that's something that so many of us can relate to, you know. We all have our own journeys, whether it be being gay or just being a person of color in America. We all have these similar experiences that can translate to so many different walks of life. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's it's horrible that you had to go through that as such a young kid. It's but, crazy, honestly, to look back and think yeah. that, wow, like a 10-year-old going through that, like, yeah. girl. Yeah, but does it also, like, give you strength in the sense, sense of, like, 10-year-old Ophelia can get through that shit. I can get through this fucking, this little shit that I'm going through now. Like, this, does, does that kind of happen to you, or? You know, I actually haven't thought of that. Like... Looking back, I realized, wow, like, if I could survive this, I can survive anything. Yeah. So thank you for bringing that up to me because I never really had it, like, pieced together in my head yeah. like that. Yeah. So honestly, looking back, girl, if I can do all that kind of <laughs> mental trauma, yeah. baby. And get through it and still fucking look fabulous Girl, as, shit. as long as no one yeah. actually stabs me, I'm good. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I can't handle physical trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mental, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm good, okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. If I get a fucking a little taser, a little bit. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you said you've been here for six months. Mm -hmm. How was the... Um, How's the fucking, how's like the drag community, has they, have they accepted you? Have you been like snuggling up and like finding your little niche out here? Mm -hmm. Or did you face a little backlash? Did you face a little like, right. how, how's that process been for you so far? It's actually been very disconnected, honestly. Because moving from Iowa, I truly did not know like a single soul in Los Angeles. And it was my job and my duty to connect and meet with people when I moved here in order to understand, you know, the kind of process it is mm -hmm. to be in Los Angeles. So I've really honestly not gotten to meet a lot of, you know, drag artists here. But when this whole pandemic is over, I'm ready to go out, to perform, to network, to really put my name out there because drag is drag is my love, drag is my art, and yeah. I really want the world to see what I have to offer. Wow. COVID has made it cloudy. Like, mm -hmm. Very your, cloudy. For your debut. You yeah, know? as someone from LA, like, yeah, LA has been shut down. It's not the same. Like, mm -hmm. if you can't even eat at a restaurant, you're not gonna like, it's, yeah. it's tough. Absolutely. Like, you know, with comedy, it's kind of going, you know, like I have a, one of the writers for the show is like, he just started doing comedy and like a year in, this happens. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, we're just, we just have to adjust. Right, like pivot. how, like how are you navigating um, like your comedy through this COVID situation? It fucking sucks, dude. I mm -hmm. feel like, um, I feel lethargic. I feel like I haven't worked out. Mm -hmm. You know, have you ever drank like three sodas in a row? Oh my God, yeah. And then you just feel like shit. You feel no. like you want to throw mm -hmm. up or, or, or burp or whatever. That's how I feel. I feel like I haven't been able to like express myself fully with the art that I, you know, that I want to, that mm -hmm. I want to do. And, uh, but that, but look at that. This, it's led me to creating the show. Exactly. You know, I mean, I mean, people like you guys and, and like saying my shit, you know, talking my shit, you allowing other people to talk their shit and like say what they, you know, what they feel. And hopefully it resonates with, you know, some people out there, you know, and, but, I am very excited for when it does open back up. Like that's, Absolutely. that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. You know, just perform live, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really connects us is that we love to perform to a live audience yeah. and to feed off their energy. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Like, it's just like, like I told you, I was always kind of like very anti-digital content, but mm -hmm. I mean, I never wanted to make sketches like when baby, like, right. you know, like that type of shit or like have like a, a girl with like, a fat ass and just be like, dude, just look over like on some like corny shit. Like I want yeah. to like have some substance, like have like, you know what I mean? Be smart, be, be funny and all that. So that's why it, it took me a little time, but 
I mean, just, you know, I'm blessed to, like, have this team. And, right, and, and it's doing studio. well for you right now because yeah. you got the whole setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a long time, but long time coming, but I'm, you mm -hmm. know, you know, just taking it day by day, step by step, you know. But, now uh, you have a whole new look that you can I have a whole new fucking look, a whole new persona. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, dude. She is gagged I, out. Dude, I would love to perform comedy in this, like, uh -huh. I couldn't you even. Have oh to. wow! Yeah, I have to. I have to now. I have to now. At least once. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Especially West Hollywood. I uh. Okay. Dude, I you know the Viper Room. I performed there before. Yeah. I, I, I think it's closed down now. Is it? I think they closed it down oh, recently. Oh. But that's another like, one. Yeah. That's like I West like that. West Hollywood. That's like yeah, too yeah. far away now. Like Whiskey Go Go and all that. Um. Uh. I've always wanted to perform at the Troubadour. Troubadour is uh, like in the heart of like, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. But the comedy store is in West Hollywood too, so the I'm there one, right? all the all the fucking. Oh, time. you're there at the comedy mm -hmm. store? Yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah. But I mean, not anymore. But uh, yeah, yeah, dude, I would love to fucking perform performing this. Imagine. Yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> just like my regular jokes, but like I just the audience would gag. Yeah. Dude, that would look. That would be so sick. I'm definitely gonna do that. Fuck it. Hey, I'm doing that, dude. Okay, right. try. Yeah, so yeah, you'll yeah. make a pledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm making a fucking yeah. pledge now. As soon as all this shit's over and I start performing again, I'm gonna do a show in this. Yeah, it's gonna be so sick. It's gotta be in West Hollywood, though. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Find the audience. So, uh, so you, you don't really have right now. You don't really have like um, drag acquaintances. Not really, and it's so sad to me because I really want to meet all the drag artists out here. I really want to connect with people. That's something that I love to do is connecting with people on a like face-to-face -face basis. So it's it's been hard, but you know that's the tenacity of the human spirit. We continue See? to go forward and adapt. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, and like the positive is that you, you know, LA hasn't spooked you. Like, it's like. Oh, girl, it can scare me, baby. Yeah, yeah. She spooked LA. Yeah. Okay! <laughs> Trust. <Yeah. laughs> I wanna. How? What, what does it entail? Like, what is your live performance like exactly? Like, what, do you, what exactly do you do when, when you're in front of an audience? Oh, my God. So, when I do a show, I want to give the audience an out-of-body experience, basically. Okay. I want to give them a disconnect from reality. I want them to feel like, wow, I'm in a safe space and I can just let my freak flag fly, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I really want to, I really love incorporating um, just high energy performances. I love to get the crowd going. I love to be that, you know, hype girl that just yeah. like makes the vibe and the energy in the room like raise by 10 bars. Uh, and yeah, like I just want everyone to enjoy their life and to remember that there's so much to offer in the world than just your nine to five job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how, wait, how did you guys meet again? You guys want to tell the yes. people the story? How do we meet, Doug? I mean, yeah. I live with Miss Sugar Pop. Ooh, so another queen. Another queen. I met her at the Flaming Saddles. Which really? Is yeah, I met mm -hmm. her at the Flaming Saddles. When I first moved out to LA, I just didn't know anyone. So I just went out to a gay bar in West Hollywood and figured I need to meet some friends. Flaming Saddles is definitely one of the gayest bars on West Hollywood. Or on was Santa Monica. one of the gayest bars on Santa Monica. Yeah. Right. But low key, all the strippers there were straight, so it's Okay, like, well, oh, first of all, yeah. they had these motherfucking strippers at Flaming Saddles that would swing from ropes on the ceiling. Yes. Oh my and God. And cowboy yes. hit you, dude. Yeah. You would be like talking to them just like, Oh, fuck, the prettiest man you've ever seen just, just fucking You're in front lying. of you, just like, oh shit, yeah. Not yeah. Tarzan swinging from the red. No, 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 yeah, a cowboy right Tarzan, dude. Okay, yeah. there it is. Yeah. It was the fucking craziest shit I've ever seen yeah. in my fucking life. That's insane. They would, they would swing back and yeah. forth nonstop. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, there'd be bachelorette parties all the time. Woo! They have, you know what's crazy? They have, at Flaming Sounds, they have unisex bathrooms. Oh, oh yeah, oh. I've never seen before. Yeah, and there was always a girl that had paper towels to hand out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and someone was always like, throwing oh. up, and then and someone's always person. doing blow in yeah, the bathroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, <laughs> she's like, why are three people going to one stop? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but then, a towel. Do you guys need yeah. napkin? No, <laughs> okay. Right. Tissue, condoms yeah, yeah, yeah. under the stall, like literally, <laughs> literally. Do you want my key? Oh uh, no, okay. not the key. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, R.I.P. to that. Yeah. Right, I miss those days, baby. Yeah, no, it was. 
fucking, it was such a blast. Like I would always go to Fiesta Cantina. Fiesta Cantina was yeah, like a good Yeah, that's a good place too. Yeah, yeah it's a cool spot. Fun. They have and like, it was there. just like, you, it would, there would be like no fights there. Cause like, if you go to Hollywood Boulevard, there's always like fucking fights. There's you no go, like, fights downtown. in West Hollywood. Yeah, West Hollywood uh, ain't no fucking fights. Yeah, yeah. no. I mean, gays fight with words. Right, they, really they fight with physical. action. Like, yeah, we're they just can't, and We shady. can't fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, this is something I really want to ask. Have your parents seen Ophelia? Oh my gosh. So my mom, she's my biggest supporter, my biggest fan. I love her dearly. She is my DNA. Um, she has come out to watch me perform in drag. Wow. Here in and, Oh, I mean. And, and Iowa, back, in, back in Iowa, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where she lives. Yeah. Um, and so to see her, it's it was truly so heartwarming and so amazing to see my mom come from someone who hated people being gay to being one of my biggest supporters. Gross. Yeah, exactly. Gross. It's Gross. just about exposure and understanding, yeah. like, you know, what's actually going on in the world. And I think she just Absolutely. didn't know, like, yeah. what being gay meant. Um, but that's the only person that has really come out to watch me in drag. My dad has seen my photos, as well as my sister. Um, is your dad like, who's, she's hot. Oh, wait. Right. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, sorry. daddy. Yes. <laughs> Papa. Yes. <laughs> no, but yeah, he's definitely seen my photos. Uh, he's a, definitely a supporter now, which I That's just appreciate. Cool, you know, yeah. it's yeah, all about growth. Progress, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so if you're not willing to meet me halfway, then I'm just not it's willing to expose you to the things that make me happy. Absolutely. Yeah. So. Absolutely. I had a friend of mine who was, um, he kind of uh, exiled his parents for treating him badly. And mm -hmm. he has a kid now. And he said that their punishment is not spending time with him and his grants and their grandson. Absolutely. And I was like, that's, that's the worst punishment you could give your parents. Or anyone who wrongs you is like, yeah. you Absolutely. no longer have me in your life. Like, that's, exactly. You know I mean? It's the most heartbreaking thing. But, you know, it is the effect from your cause. Yeah. So. You have to, yeah. It's just they have to face what they do. You have to face the know, music. Regardless of whether they regret it or not. And you have if, to forgive them in your own time. You know? Right. If you're willing to like come back and like meet me halfway, then absolutely. But if you're not, if you continually become indoctrined by your own beliefs, then have fun with your beliefs. Because those will be the only things that you have back in your life. Yeah. Are you an only, only child? Um, I have my sister. She's three years younger than me. Um, she's very progressive. Yeah, she's cool. So that's awesome. Yeah, she definitely uh, loves me and loves my lifestyle. So I appreciate that. She's seen you perform too? Um, so she actually hasn't seen me perform in person. Um, you know, she's married now. So she has that whole family life to take care of. Yeah. But Someday, I would love to just get my family together and just show them a good time. Yes. And yeah. show them my drag and my art. Yeah, Doug Doug will take them to all the best spots in WeHo. Okay, yeah. trust. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep hearing yeah. about Food Bar, but I've never <laughs> seen or stepped inside of it. Food Bar, what's yeah. that? Fubar was, I don't know if it's even open anymore, but it used to be the bar where you would go at the end of the night and it stands for fucked up beyond all. Relief. Oh, wow. And it's basically where you just go and get some dick. I'm gay. Wow. So it's an after bar, like two to 4 a.m.? Yes. It's oh. the end of the night bar. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there is like completely naked strippers. Oh, wow. Yeah. Baby. They used to have a thing where you would have, I think it was Thursday nights, it was like the big dick contest where you would go in the bathroom. <gasps> You're lying. Take a Polaroid of your dick and then they ah. would hang it on this rope that went across the whole bar. So there was just all these live dicks and then there would be a winner. Declared. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. That's iconic. It's like, yeah. I mean. Welcome to the gala. Hey, <laughs> shout out. Hey, shout out football, baby. Football. Football. Shout out football. Football, Rata, tata. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, I, I'll just, I'll just. <laughs> 
It's like, like a wet t-shirt we were, contest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I would just beat you guys okay. at Denny's afterwards. Right. Like, yeah. 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 She's like, so just let me know when Denny's. Yeah. Well, we got some chicken and waffles. Yeah, yeah. you guys go to a food bar? Okay, I'm just going to get an Uber. <laughs> right. And, uh, I'll, but I'll see you guys at Denny's? Yeah. Okay, yeah. trust. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be there at 4. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah I'll right. be there at 4 yeah. yeah. I'll, yeah. be, I'll be in the car at 4 or 5, pick yeah. you guys up, and we'll, we'll head over there. We just have before. There have been nights like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, dude, I used to, yeah. My uh, so my older sister like she had like a lot of close gay friends. So mm-hmm. when we would go out, when I would like hang out with them, we would go to West Hollywood. And it was just like a fucking blast. Everyone was just so nice. Oh yeah, the drinks are so good. They're like good price too. Like it's not crazy. And mm-hmm. fucking, like, everyone was just so fucking friendly. Right. Can't wait for you to see Halloween though. Hopefully, uh, hopefully I can't COVID wait. clears up by October, dude. They ha- oh they have to. Yeah, like You're I'm gonna, getting vaccinated the minute we can. Yeah. You're so gonna fucking love we hope in, in baby. Halloween I will time. turn the scene around. Dude. I can't wait. Somebody has to. Okay, <laughs> we need something. <laughs> oh man, yeah. I want to thank you guys again for coming out. Like, of such course. Short notice, too. Thank you so much for having us. Like yeah. it has been such a fun experience. Like one of the things that I look for forward to and one of the things that I wanted in moving to Los Angeles was meeting other creative people who just strive to continually make art that entertains the audience so yeah yeah it's so great to meet you guys yeah and, and you know what's really important is, is to, to like be true to yourself like I was mm-hmm. just telling the crew before you guys got here like we were talking about a mutual friend who hasn't really accepted who they are and I'm mm-hmm. just like I I, res- I only respect people who who are true to themselves and are proud of who they are. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, and I have guests of all sorts come through and like, I, I don't change up who I am. Mm-hmm. The way I speak to you is the way I speak to a comedian or a musician or a rapper right. and shit like that. Like, like even right now I have makeup on, but I'm still, you still like, you know that I'm not bullshitting you guys and like mm-hmm. putting on a persona. So, um, Except when I'm Gina, then yeah. Then okay, I'll then Gina. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I haven't figured out the I haven't figured out where the persona's at, but <laughs> but fucking You'll but get yeah, it. you know, and it's just yeah, I'll get there, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, it's important for me to to you know connect with people like you guys who are you guys know who you guys are. Absolutely. And you might have gone through some other shit that other people might have not gone through. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But the fact that you're here and you know who you guys are, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that. That's inspiring to a lot of people who are too afraid to really fucking be who they really are. You right. Know what I'm like, yeah. Or going through the same thing, you know? Yeah, they exactly. need someone that they can see in the world that they can relate to. Exactly, and they yeah. realize, wow, like, I can get through this. Yeah. And I'm just, like, so glad that you guys are just, like, a prime example of that. Thank and, you. And uh, I feel like we really had, like, a really great conversation. And I get, you know... And I learned a lot. I fucking learned a shitload. I learned that bangs look fucking great on me, dude. Okay. Yeah. They like, are sitting right yeah. and ready. Yes, dude. <laughs> and like, and you know, and I learned a lot about, about drag, the art of drag. I learned a lot about, you you know, you guys and, and you know, just everything else. Like, yeah. do you, you want to add anything else to like, you know, with the audience? Yeah. Just, like, I feel like people really understand drag just from what they see on television. And that's amazing in itself. But also, there is there is so much going on behind the scenes. There's so much going on with every single individual story that each one brings to their drag that people don't get to see. So yeah. I just want to say thank you for giving spotlight on, you know, drag artists and allowing, you know, people to see some other type of way than what they would see on a television set. Because we all have our own stories that we can share and that's what has created us to who we are today. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm like fucking terrible too. This monster is fucking hitting uh, different, dude. I'm not I, a know, I'm sorry, I swear to God, if I was fucking drunk, I'd be fucking crying my eyes out right now, dude. Dude. Yeah. Doug, do you want us to add something before we leave? I mean, I'm just here for my 10%. Yeah. Really <laughs> okay, baby. <laughs> Uh, oh, so here at the M word, we uh, we uh, we like um, we like to show appreciation for like our guests who come mm-hmm. through, and uh, we're strong believers of giving people flowers when they're alive to receive them. So, and then we we we're above a flower shop, so oh we God. got you some flowers that uh, that we actually put together ourselves. They are so beautiful. And they're oh for they're for you and oh, you. Thank you so and, uh, much. And just just as, like as an appreciation for you 
what you're doing for your, your past, your present, and your future. Like, you, you're an inspiration, dude. You guys are inspirations oh. to people across not only this country, but the world. Because, like, you. you know, like, the fucking, the rest of some, there are some parts of the world where we would not be allowed to do any of this. Absolutely. And, like, I just want to, like, show that, you know, I'm grateful for, like, being, even being, being able to do this, being able to talk to you guys, mm -hmm. you guys being able to express your feelings, your emotions, in your life and uh yeah so thank you i appreciate that you know i feel like drag queens are the mascots of the world so this just means everything to me yeah, so thank you so much of course, Malkin. Of oh my god uh, i, I, I want to hug you tighter but your hat right. i want to drop your hat, hat <laughs> yeah. it's in six inches baby yeah, so no, thank you so much for course, having of us of course of course thank you for making me of course of course yeah. thank and, you um, babe i think we're done Hey, uh, I got. <laughs> I can't talk right now. I'm kind of busy. What? Do I look good? Do you, Do I look good? <laughs> Everyone's around me, so that's it. I look. <laughs> oh shit! I know it. You're so blue. Cool. <laughs> I want you guys to meet Ophelia. Look, baby, this is my girlfriend. This is Ophelia. Hi, nice to meet you. That's my girl. No, that's, Hi, that's my girl. Oh, it's both my sisters. Look at this shit, dog. <laughs> wow, the screenshot shot again. Fucking bitches. <laughs> What's up, bro? Are you by yourself? Dude, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm in full drag, baby. How, do I look pretty? What are you hugging on? <laughs>